Hi beautiful Libras and welcome back to the channel everybody. So now I do know why we were getting so many higher arcanas in the reads yesterday. Guys, we were hit with a solar flare and it kind of like opens the veil. So that's why I was picking up so many technical difficulties all day long. My apps, my internet, my cell phone, my computer, everything was going on the fritz. And it was just a fluke that I was doing the readings during the solar flare. That I knew something was going on for all that um, <laughs> energy. So we know what's coming up in the future. So I am pulling on the archetype deck today, guys. Bear with me because I got to read from the book. But when we get that many higher arcana, we know that there's going to be spiritual unions coming together. And I want to find out what the archetypes are for Libra. What's going on? It's all meant to be, guys. Like the veil was thin. I was just a fluke. I was doing my reads during the flare. So let's see. The archetypes for Libra. And whoa. The Siren, the Kiss, Archetypes for Libra. What's going on? The Judge. Well, that's Justice, all right. The Medallion. Okay, now for the person that is coming toward Libra. The Archetype of the person that is coming toward Libra, please, Spirit. Well, the fault line, the vessel, hmm. archetype for Libra, archetype for Libra, the person entering Libra's life, next person to enter Libra's life spirit, the archetype of this person, who is the archetype, whoa, not those, but that one, I'll keep these aside, just in case, spirit saying, so archetype, the maiden, okay, this could be your energy, remember Libra, or vice versa, depends here. So the first card out was the siren. Just bear with me guys. It does, it takes longer, but it gives you a lot of uh, information here. Better to take the time and know the next person's energy than not. This could be your energy, like I said, or vice versa. Okay. Archetype include the nymph, the mermaid, the fairy, and often they come in sets of three as a trinity of temptation. Oh, so this could be the archetype that you've been attracting. But let's see. So the siren calls and the world spins. What we thought we wanted pales in comparison to the sweet allure of her song. We find ourselves lost in a spell of desire and longing and perhaps even lust. Huh. It's the journey that matters. It's not about the good or the bad. It's the journey that matters. Okay, so now we're going to find out about the kiss. This could have been your energy or the person coming toward you. Remember that. Going to the back of the book for this one. Okay says, write down the story of your first kiss. What was changed in that moment? 
Before a first kiss, the air is electrified. Each breath is alive with possibility and magic. What will their lips taste like? What will their tongue? It's the visualizations. Do they want me back in return? So Libra energy goes by the kiss. You know, the imagination, was it what we uh, intended it to be? You know, you can tell a lot about a person by the way they kiss. Are they cold? Are they loving? You can tell a lot about a person by the kiss. And maybe that's how you form your judgments. <laughs> the judge. Maybe that's how you judge a person. Bear with me, guys. Hmm. Interesting. This will reveal a lot, so just know that the judge energy is contagious. When we feel judged, walls go up all around us. So that's when we feel accepted, the entire world softens. So I'm feeling like a lot of you feel like you're being judged or maybe you could be forming judgments about people the way that they kiss it's in the kiss that's what it is are they warm are they cold maybe that's how you're judged or people judge you or you judge others by that by the kiss What is this? The medallion. Imagine if you and your family school or social group had a crest, an emblem, or an amulet, what would it, what would it be if your family or your social circle had a crest, what would it be? The passing of a sacred object is an ancient ritual within families, between lovers and tribes across the globe. We give jewels, treasures, keepsakes, and mementos of all kinds, some of great material value. Others ha hold an emotional resonance, and it's still others with both yet when these gifts are bestowed upon us, it is important to recognize that they may bind us to an unspoken agreement or promise. When the medallion card appears, be aware of how objects you hold dear may be embedded with unconscious energy or expectations materials hold consciousness and it's time to reconcile the vibration of the objects that are around you what do you covet and collect and why do you collect them is there an object that you have held on to for years that you are ready to release perhaps it is time to reach for the medallions that align with your deepest values 
family traditions. Legacies, what is best for you? If you could have a crest for your family, what would it be and why? Are you judging people based on what is acceptable to society or are you basing judgments upon what others believe or think or are you being judged for your beliefs or judged for your crest or your medallion? Are you holding on to a family uh, tradition that you need to let go of? That's your archetype here. So Spirit is asking you to imagine what your family crest would be. And in so doing, <clears throat> Is it time to release it? We are not judged by our, are we being judged by our families? Are we being judged by what our family wants us to do? Are we forming judgments based upon what is popular? Or do you form judgments on what society tells you you should be with? Or you know what I mean? Like, Spirit's asking you to imagine what your family crest would be. And is that you? Or are you daring to be different? Holding on to a family belief system or a tradition. Holy moly. Now I asked about the person coming toward you. Or the archetypes that you've been used to. Like, you know, I'm hearing about this family crest things. I'm trying to get a good analogy. Like, are we upholding a tradition based upon what our family did? Or are we going to surrender that? Afraid, not being afraid to step out of the norm, not being afraid to be different, or are we doing it because we have, we're afraid of judgment? Are we going to be accepted by the who we are and what we are, or it's all to do with family here? And being judged by your peers or being judged by your, um, social circles are we doing things to be fit in to a category a lot of people do you know you can tell a lot about a person by the way that they kiss you know what i mean like chances are if you're kissing someone and they seem cold and they're tight-lipped, that is their personality type. If they're warm and they're inviting, yeah, somebody is. Sorry, guys. I'm drawn first to this maiden card. I don't know why, but I am feeling drawn to this card. The Maiden archetype is the epitome of innocence, innocent arousal, naive sensuality and precarious purity. She is compelling and addictive.
because of her flawless and youthful glow. She's the first archetype in the Trifica of Maiden Mother Crone. The Maiden. She has much to learn, so this is an experience. Are you drawn to inexperienced people? Or is someone drawn to you because they see you as a maiden? Archetypes. Are you presenting yourself as this maiden? Or are you attracted to someone of innocent innocence you know hang on this is gonna form a story guys okay the maiden is perfectly positioned for trouble to come her way and subject to a challenge that leads to the next phase of womanhood she must grow up yet hesitates at the well, so a lot of you Librans might be attracted to people who you know act innocent, like they're maidens, they need rescuing. You know what I mean? You masculines may be attracting feminines who pretend they need your help, who put on this like act of like the maiden who needs assisting, who needs. They're immature. They are immature. Okay? The maiden represents the side of us that is riveted and curious, drawn to shadowy forests, dark nights, and, oh, they like the bad, they like the bad boys, the bad girls. You know what I mean? Her poisonous fruit. She's, uh, an allurer. She is attracted to the dark. She has poisonous fruits and her magic is edgy and includes both shame and delight. <laughs> Causing you to fall down the rabbit hole. So this is something that Libra masculines have to pay attention to the damsel in distress, you know, but their fruit is poisonous. They're leading you down the rabbit hole. So you are being cautioned, Libra masculines, to not fall for the maiden type. And if you are the maiden type of Libra feminines, don't be doing, you're getting judged based upon, you know, don't be afraid to empower yourself. You don't have to appear as like a maiden who needs rescuing. It's the bad girl, bad boy type I'm hearing. So, a lot of you feminines are drawn to the bad boy. So you know it's going to break your heart. You know what I mean? You always want what you can't have type of energy. It's like an innate ability to be drawn to the bad boys and the bad girls. You know what I mean? And that's a cautionary thing to be aware of when you're attracting in a new love relationship. You know what I mean? Am I going for the same archetype again? Or am I going to do something differently here? Hmm. We know what the vessel is. The vessel is people who have the ability to like bring things from the afterlife into their current life. They are a vessel of information. They are a vessel. They are like clairvoyance. You have a lot of gifts and you might be, hang on. 
I know that that's what it is, but hang on. Hmm. The vessels are also like divine feminine energy. You know, the like, they're a receiver. They're a receiver. They receive messages. They could be spiritual. This could be your archetype or that is the kind of archetype you're attracted to. Maybe you are drawn to that type. Maybe that is your own type. It'll form a story here, so bear with me because, guys, it's important information for you to know. It's really unique, and I haven't used this deck for about a year, but I know that it's really informative, especially when relationships are coming together, guys. Uh, we got to know the archetypes. Yeah, the vessel says... The most powerful archetype form on earth. It is everywhere. Cups hold fluid, stoves hold fire, our bodies hold organs, and homes hold families. Through the simple act of separation, the vessel protects what is it contains. Nests protect eggs, savings accounts protect our earnings, and the planets are contained within their circular orbit. When this card appeared, it is, is time to assess what is being held together and how. The vessel is the vessel too tight, too loose, broken, or empty, or full. Or perhaps there is no vessel at all, and the contents spill in every direction. It is unnatural for structures to be formed and eventually fall apart. The vessel has a life cycle that must be honored. It is time for you to build, break, or repair. You must find out what it is. The physical body is the most sacred vessel of all. It is the one in which you reside from your first breath to your last. It needs your attention. Oh, okay. Hang on. It'll form a picture here. It's like you may be attracted to people that need your constant attention. And if they're not constantly paid attention to, they feel somehow that they are being ignored. It, it, it falls apart. Are you the type that is attracting this type of archetype? Hmm. Interesting. Or is that the archetype that you are exuding out into the world that you are like you masculines might be attracting feminines who need your constant constant attention or they fall apart they act like the maiden they act like they they will fall apart and they're brittle they're fragile and they need constant care and attention that's what this is saying Okay, so the fault line is here. 
Imagine walking across the frozen lake that begins to crack before your eyes. No matter how optimistic and brave you might be, panic ensues. You become fearful and tense and long for stable ground, such as the energy of the fault line. It's the energy of walking on eggshells, precarious dynamics of seeing what already is to break open into chaos. It's likely this cracking is overdue as fault lines develop slowly and naturally form underlying elemental pressures. This card comes as a potent warning not to deny the shakiness that's afloat. It's much better to prepare yourself for change than to walk along the fault line pretending all is well. There is no easy fix for this situation and at hand it will require a foundational shift that alters the current dynamics from the ground up. So thus indeed is saying the same thing. It's like you masculines or you feminines could be attracting um, um, energies into your existence like if they're not pampered and cared to and and like you know what I mean constant care constant attention it starts to crack and this person feels like their whole world is coming to an end I'm feeling like really mellow dramatic energies To be caution about the next person that comes into your life. Like you don't want to be anybody's rescuer. You don't want to be, a, you know, I mean, that's what it is. That's what it is. The lover. <laughs> See? I knew that should be appearing here. The womb. That's the divine feminine energy. And that is um, choosing lovers who destroy you, the destroyer. You know what I mean? It, it's like choosing lovers. The ocean is like you want to choose people that aren't controlling, that aren't. The world is not going to collapse if you don't talk to them 50 times a day or need constant care and they are destroying you. You're attracting people that destroy you. You know what I mean? I don't know if this makes sense to you, but I know it's been a lot in your reads because it's like the archetypes. We go for the bad go boys or the bad girls. Know that it will end up destroying you. You know what I mean? If you have to walk on eggshells with somebody 24-7, there's a problem. It will end up destroying, being destroyed. If you were attracted to like the damsel in distress types, it will eventually fall apart. You want somebody who's independent, not controlling, not above you, not below you, who is level, on your level, level-headed. You don't want to come in and be anybody's rescuer. And quite often the bad boys and the bad girl types, it's like, wow. Yeah, a lot of you masculine spirit is saying are attracting, you know, your go to the assist of the damsel in distress type. Those types never work out. They don't. Because you're walking on eggshells all the time. You say the wrong thing. You do the wrong thing. You don't do this. You do this. It ends up falling apart. People that don't want to address the underlining issues here. That's what this is saying. There are a lot of archetypes here, guys. So what does Spirit want Libra to know about these archetypes? You don't want to attract anyone. A lot of you feminines are attracting people into your life like the destroyers, 
light lovers that are like the destroyers. You know they're going to destroy you, but the temptation is too great, man. It's like I'm attracted to this person, but they're the bad boy, bad girl types. They're going to end up being heartbreakers, destroyers. You don't want to walk on eggshells. A lot of you feminines might be attracted to the controlling type. Where you feel like you've got to walk on eggshells. The next person that enters your life may be, you know, a repeat pattern of things that didn't work out. So that's a cautionary measure for you. What is beneath that kiss? could tell a lot about a person by a kiss if they're loving you have a choice to make there is a cause and effect so yes some of you are attracting people who are bullheaded maybe yourself at times can be bullheaded. You respond with grace here. Against what? Someone who's bullheaded. That's what this is saying. So a lot of you feminine Libras are attracting in bullheaded people. Their way or the highway. And they put you in a role of having to be like the, the weaker one of the bunch. And that doesn't work out. So you choose love. Because you're graceful. You know what I'm saying? You're graceful in nature. That is your own innate ability. You're attracting in the bad boy types, guys. People who are stubborn, bullheaded, their way, the highway, and they sort of like to submiss you somehow. That is who you, that's the vibrations you're sending out there. That you're attracting people that are going to be controlling. That you have to be submissive somehow. Maybe that is your family crest. You know what I mean? Like, maybe that is the way your grandmothers did it or your mothers did it or your lineage did it. So you feel like you got to follow suit. And it's not working. A lot of you masculines are attracting, like I said, the innocent type, but are poisonous to the soul. <laughs> hmm. Enjoy the moment. Yeah, know your labels. It's really important, you know, to visualize your family crest and what it would be if you had it. So it's repeating patterns that we have to break. Masculines choosing the, you know, the maidens, the ones you got to rescue, the ones that you got to do everything for, the ones that, and if you don't, oh, there's hell to pay. And you feminines are attracting people who want it their way. The strong masculine type, but they're controlling. That's why you're being cautioned. Know your labels. And you might be saying things like, well, my mother did it or my grandmother did it. It's just the way it is. That's love. No live in the moment you are a queen and you are worthy of a king you are a king 
worthy of a queen. A queen is very self-sufficient. A queen does not have to be pampered 24-7. A queen is a queen for all that. They're a leader. And a lot of you masculines are attracting maidens when you should be attracting queen energy. A lot of you are feminines, are queens. And you're attracting in people that are, are keeping you down. Who want to control you. Whoa, that's archetypes for you. It don't lie. Hmm. Yeah, be of service here. So, what's going on? A king, B. A queen, B. It is time to rise. So, like I said, some of you archetypes are attracting in, you feminines are attracting in masculines who want it their way or no way at all. Controlling, want you submissive, want you to play the role. But that's where you got to want know your labels. Spirit is telling you to imagine your family crest and what it would be. Oh, it's been done in our families for generations. Oh, it's been this way for generations. That's why it's not working. So you want to attract in your, your equal matches. You know, if you're a leader, you want to attract in a, someone who is a leader. You know what I mean? But I see one is higher up and one is down here. And that is the archetypes that you're choosing. So you're being cautioned for the next lover that comes into your life. Don't allow people to judge you. Don't allow it's equal. Or it's not about the my way or the highway. You're an equal. And you deserve your equal match. A king is a king for all that. A king or a queen rule justly. They're equal. They do not sit upon their throne dictating to others the way it should be done. They're not afraid to take good leadership and be a good king or queen is fair. They're balanced. They are leaders. There is not one hierarchy. So a lot of you are attracting soulmates or lovers. That's this. That's why your justice. Even level. Or no way at all. But you're attracting in this. Unfairness. One is above the other. When it has to be like this and that's what you're attracting in someone on your match someone on your level wow you are getting a lover coming towards you but that's what i was saying it's got to be there is judgment and there is that unequality there Are you afraid of judgment? Are you choosing people that judge you? And keep you down low so they can be above you? Whoa. Damn. So, this is destiny. This is faith. This is healing. And that's that bad boy, bad girl energy. I'm telling you right now. You're blessed with healing abilities and intuitiveness. Yeah. And a lot of you masculines are attracting the party type. You know, the party girl. But you, they always want to be adorned. 
they always want to be uh, catered to, you know, primmed over, you know, they got to appear a certain way. And they end up hurting you, <laughs> betraying you. Bad boy, bad girl types, guys. Archetypes. So judgment. Again, the Queen of Swords. Risky behavior. You know what I mean? You're attracting in people who do things recklessly, are in player-like energy, in for a good time, and then they quickly go out. That's the bad boy type, guys. The partier, the fun-loving, you know what I mean? But that's who you're attracting in, Spirit is saying. My way or the highway type of people, and they're trying to submiss you. Hmm. Good time. Passion. You know? And it's like... Hang on. Hmm. And then they drag their feet when it comes to commitment. You know what I mean? You're attracting in the bad boy, bad girl types. I'm telling you right now, guys. And you're going to have to hear his judgment. Are you choosing people in your life because you're afraid of judgment? Are you attracting people in your life because it's the social norm? Are you attracting in people or who live up to that standard, who are afraid of judgment and being in the social norm? What are my friends going to think? You know, uh, that's the bad boy type, bad girl type. That's the type you've been attracting. And Spirit is saying they're immature. You're attracting in immature energies because... That is the bad boy, bad girl type. They're in for a good time. And they that's the fault line. It ends up collapsing because someone, it's not equal. Okay? This has been the past history. Okay? Why you keep getting hurt. Interesting read. masculines or feminines so enjoy the moment that's who you're attracting in people who just didn't get caught up in the moment and you start kissing on somebody and it leads to another thing and it leads to another thing and then before you know it you're in a situation that you don't know how to get yourself out of Or you're attracting in people who just live in the moment. Yeah. And then they actually are the Seven of Swords. The poisonous to your soul. You can tell a lot about a person by a kiss. If they kiss cold, they're cold. I don't care what anybody says. If they kiss cold, they're cold. You can tell a lot about a person by a kiss. Yeah. Commitment dodgers. When there is true love here. That's that agape love. You know, we choose to love. We choose to love because we're so loving. You know what I mean? We choose to love. Oh, they love me. So I'll put up with this. Oh, they love me. So I'll bend over backwards. I'll kiss their arse. And Libra's like, whoa. 
hold the phone. They use love as a weapon, you know what I mean? When there is agape love here for you with commitment and someone genuine and sincere, a king bee, there they are, it's the king of pentacles, someone trustworthy, someone honest, someone dedicated, someone in that energy, sincere, you know what I mean? Damn. So I am saying right now, <laughs> Like I'm saying, you masculines might be choosing karmics because you're loyal, because you love unconditionally, because you tell the truth and are genuine and sincere and you have agape love that is unconditional love. So then you're attracting feminines who are pretending that they're the innocent waifs and need rescuing and they're karmics. So you want to meet someone on your match who, who is on your level. Same with you feminines. That's the bad go girl, bad boy types. Oh, I'm so innocent. I need help. Can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? And then when you don't dote on them 24-7, they run off with someone else. The needy type. Mm -hmm. King B. Yep. It's keeping somebody stuck. You're choosing people that keep you stuck. There is that damn bullheaded stubborn energy. My way or the highway. It works my way or you're gone. Whether that be feminines or masculines, that's the type you've been attracting. And then leave you out in the cold. Damn. So here is balance. You got to meet your balanced energy. You have to meet people for to find this true love person. You have got to, to have balance. You know what I mean? So a lot of you masculines are, are natural protectors. You know what I mean? And you feel like you have to protect this energy because they are are waifs or fragile somehow but in essence they're poisonous to your soul a queen bee that's your match right there you know you masculines this is your match you're coming up of the king of pentacles you need to have a queen of pentacles Someone who knows their worth. Someone who knows their value. Like you do. They got to be your equal match. They work hard. You work hard. Um, they're able. They're genuine. They can look after themselves. They know their value. They're not innocent waifs. They're not. They're very capable. Of producing money. Very capable of living on their own. Very capable. This is your match. Who you need. That's who you could be attracting in. Someone very financially independent. Uh, someone who is very your match. You don't want somebody lesser than you. Innocent waifs here. Maidens. You deserve a queen. A queen. Not someone in you know immature someone who can look after business someone who is business minded business oriented very financially responsible capable you feminines it's the same you want to attract in uh, someone who is at your level a king of pentacles, someone who can look after themselves, someone who's good with money, resources, 
um, does not sit above you or below you. Damn. Yeah, manipulations. You want to attract someone who is good on their own, who has been on their own, who is single and confident and knows their value and knows their worth. They pay their own way. They pay their bills. They look after business. They can look after a home. They can look after finances. This is who you want to attract in, not someone codependent, not someone who is going to rely on you for money, rely on you for their confidence. I need you to build my self-esteem. You need to attract in somebody who already has self-esteem. Lovers. Mm. Balance. We meet each other. I breathe you in. You breathe me in. This is equal. Equal. They're the same as you. That's who you want to attract in. Not someone below you. Not someone above you. You want to attract in this equal partnership. But your archetypes are saying you're falling for, you masculines are falling for the maidens. The ones you got to rescue, the ones you got to dote on, the ones you got to uh, give them 24-7 or their whole world falls apart. They're like, you know, it's like walking on eggshells every time you turn around. And same with you feminines afraid to speak your mind, afraid to be who you are because you don't want to threaten this person's masculinity. I mean, that's the archetypes that are coming out. So if you want to meet your equal match, you've got to find somebody who is your equal match. And it is that simple. Not someone below you, not someone above you, someone on your level and it's looking like that's who's coming in but it's a cautionary note to let you know to recognize your archetype who you usually go for because your soulmate may differ from your usual type so we can look at the past and say why relationships fell apart because they were not your equal. They were not your match. You don't want to go in and rescue somebody and you feminines were attracting the bad boy types, the heartbreakers, the ones who come in and, and take your value from you and leave you out in the cold. It's recognizing your equal match and, and assessing the situations because you do have a love partnership coming in that is your match but sometimes we get distracted by you know the wrong archetype our usual type we fall for if it's had a repeat pattern and you know it is not uh stood the test of time and it always fails that's why it's failing it's not your type but that's the type that you're drawn to you know what i mean it's in the kiss. You fall into temptation. You're swooned away by their, their, their kisses and their affection and their passion. And then you end up getting hurt. If they kiss coldly, you know damn well they're cold. But it's because you choose to love unconditionally that you're getting hurt. <laughs> Put, start putting some conditions on. That's what it's saying. Start making some judgments. Is this person on my level? Can I communicate with this person? Can I relate with this person? Do they make me happy or am I doing things because the family tradition says that I got to love this person? Because that's what men do. Or that's what women do. Women need to be looked after. 
got to break that traditional role. No, I my next lover, I want somebody independent. I want somebody who can pay their own way. I want somebody who can look after themselves and knows their own value, can operate, just function fine on their own, and vice versa. You feminines, take care, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the read. It's different, and I like it. Take care.